we all know that VFX can be really hard and take up a lot of time creating. But it doesn't always need to be hard or time consuming. Just like the four effects we are going to explain today. For the first one, it's going to be blurry. Or in better words, the background is gonna look like it's shot with a low shutter speed, while our main subject is moving normally, creating a drunken or substance induced shot. And what do we need for our shot? Well, actually just one shot, the subject doing their thing. However, the background is also important. The more movement you have in your background, the cooler the effect. Once we have our clip, it's time for After Effects. First I place the shot in my timeline and here I want to single out my subject. Of course I will use the rotoscope tool for this. In the toolbar on top, I look for the icon resembling a person and a brush. I select this and then double click on my layer. This will open up the layer panel and here I can rotoscope my subject. With the green circle, I select my subject and hit the spacebar to analyze forward. After Effects will of course do all the heavy lifting. You just need to relax and wait for them to finish. And once it's done, you can freeze the rotoscope calculations by hitting this button right here. Again, wait and voila, our subject is cut out. Now we again place the shot underneath our first layer and then it's time for the hazy effect. And it's actually just one simple effect that we need, the CC wide time effect. I add it to my footage and increase both the forward and backward steps a little. And voila, we already have a substance induced shot. But we can maybe fine tune it with something extra like a posterized time, where we can reduce the frame rate, giving it a more shoppy feeling. Now, the second effect is actually a very simple one, now that AI is in the picture. A sky replacement or set extension. We can take every shot that we want and add whatever we want from the generative fill from Photoshop. And I know, this is After Effects, but hear me out. Let's say I have this shot with motion and I want to change the sky and add a castle. Easy peasy. I take a snapshot of the first frame and send that to Photoshop. Here I do my AI magic, add a bunch of cool stuff and these new extras I bring back into After Effects. Preferably just like the new assets as an alpha and nothing more. Then it's time for our magic. We will 3D camera track our shot. I'm not going into detail how this works because we got a dedicated video on the little info icon right here. Anyway, with our clip selected, we hit the camera track button. Let After Effects do its thing and then when it's finished, we set our ground plane and origin and create a 3D camera. And here comes a trick that makes this effect work. We will be looking for a tracking point in the landscape that is more or less on the same spot as our new set extension asset. I select that tracking point and right click on it. Then I choose create null. Our next step will be copying all the transform properties of that null object. Then I will make our asset a 3D layer and pasting the transform property values. Normally it will now sit more or less on the right spots. You can use the scale and anchor point property to fine tune the assets if needed. Now do exactly the same thing for the sky. Again look for a tracking point. That seems to have the correct position and repeat previous steps. And voila, it couldn't be easier. Of course this effect has its limitations as big movements with a lot of perspective changes won't work here. By the way, just like us, every VFX artist needs stock clips. You can download unlimited stock assets without leaving After Effects. Imagine you shot a clip where you needed some post tracking. You fly all the way back home just to realize your shot was out of focus. So basically untrackable. Yeah, you should have used Storyblocks. Storyblocks' curated stock library has everything you need to create high quality video in one place. With over a million 4K and HD footage, templates, music, sound effects, images and more. You can download unlimited high quality assets for just one predictable subscription cost. Goodbye to paperclip pricing. You will enhance your social media videos by accessing exclusive Storyblocks label tracks directly in TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. At the meantime, Storyblocks will fully protect you from copyright strikes, claims and all of that stuff. That way you can focus on what matters most. That is creating. To get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one set price, head over to storyblocks.com slash After Effects Basics or just click the link down below. Okay, the next effect is one of the most classic effects ever made, the dolly zoom, which you can witness in the first Jaws movie and the classic movie Vertigo from Hitchcock. Originally it was an in-camera effect, but we will be faking it inside After Effects. Again, we need a shot and the key aspect is that you have a steady shot where the subject always stays in the center, preferably shot on a gimbal. You can move the camera towards your subject or away from them, depends on what you like. Once you have 
have that, let's jump into After Effects. And to start, we look for the frame where the subject is closest to the lens. With our ruler guides, we are going to map out the contours. To enable the ruler guides, just hit the short key control R. This will bring up these bars on the side of your composition panel. If you click and drag from those bars, you get a ruler guideline. With these lines, I'm blocking out the contours of our subject. This way, I know the length and size of my subject, which I will be matching throughout the video. So I create a keyframe for the position and scale on the frame where I did my guidelines trick. Then I move to the end of the clip, or maybe the beginning, depends on the direction you moved your camera. And here I use the position and scale property to align my subject with my guidelines. And voila, the effect is done. You can scrub through your timeline to see if you can fine tune the position and scale, but normally it's as easy as that. And now for the last effect, which you will all probably seen on social media, the insane speed rent transitions. For this, you need a few more shots than the other effects. I would say around five to eight would do the trick. But for our effect, we'll be of course only showing you how to do the principle of the effect with one clip, as the process is completely the same for the rest of the clips. So for our clips, we need shots with motion, like moving away from your subject, panning, tilting, whatever you can think of. Just keep the motion smooth and your camera steady. If possible, use a gimbal. And keep in mind to always keep your subject set Entered. Then in After Effects, the first thing we'll be doing is stabilizing the clips. I add my clip into a new composition by selecting the clip in the project panel and dragging it into the comp icon. This will create a comp with the same settings as your clip. In the timeline of my composition, I will select a clip and go to the tracker panel. If you can't find the panel, go to the Windows menu on top and enable it from there. Then hit the Stabilize Motion button. This will open up the layer panel and here you can place your tracking point on a contrast rich spot. That is easy to track. Hit the Analyze button and once After Effects is done, you can hit the Apply button and again hit OK in the pop-up window. And voila, the video is stabilized. It's possible that you see these black borders on the side, but with a simple upscaling, we can remove that. Of course, we do this for every clip that we have, leaving us with a bunch of stabilized footage in separate compositions. These comps I will be adding in a new main comp where we'll be doing the speed ramping. And this is actually quite easy. Just select your clip, right click on them and go to time. Here you can enable the time remapping option. Now you get two keyframes resembling the start and the end of a clip. If you bring these closer together, the clip will play back faster. And voila, that's speed ramping, easy. Of course, we can play around with the easing of the clips, making the speed ramp much smoother and cooler. Like I can easy ease both keyframes, then if I select them both, I can go to the graph editor. Here I can tweak their levers and create a fallen over S, making the movement fast in the beginning, slow in the center and fast in the end. So it's a matter of playing with those levers and creating a motion of speed that you like. A last speed ramp tip, creating a reverse bump. If you copy your start keyframe and paste it behind the end keyframe, then go to the graph editor and create this hill graph, you get a cool reverse effect. And that was it for the effects, guys. If you want to learn more about After Effects, check out this video here on my left. Thank you so much for watching, see you next time.